Hi, you are watching Med with Med Simple and in today's video you are gonna learn about psoriasis. To learn about more diseases in a simplified way without breaking your heads, hit the subscribe button right now and press the bell icon, cause you know why. Yay, we just reached 35,000 subscribers and it feels so good to be helping you all. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all the love and support. Please keep supporting me always. And if you're new here, kindly consider subscribing before moving on. So, psoriasis belongs to a group of disorders known as papulosquamous disorders, where there will be papules and plaques along with formation of scales. Papules are flat lesions which are less than 1 cm in size, and plaques are flat lesions which are more than 1 cm in size. These scaly plaques are usually seen on the extensor aspect of limbs, which means the back side of your arms and front side of your legs, and it also can occur on the lower back commonly. These lesions are often itchy and can cause a lot of distress. You can demonstrate a clinical sign called Auspitz sign by scratching these lesions. There will be three layers which you can see by scratching these lesions. First, on top, you will see silvery white micaceous scales falling off from the lesion while scratching. On scratching further, you will find a layer called bulky membrane underneath which can be peeled off. Then on peeling the bulky membrane, the underlying bleeding points will be visualized. So this is called auspitz sign and this test is called as Kretage test. In people with psoriasis, when you scratch with a nail, along the lines of scratch, new psoriatic lesions are found to be developing. This is called as Koebner phenomenon which is also known as isomorphic response. Along with skin lesions, psoriasis also involves the nails and joints. Nail changes which occur in psoriasis are coarse and irregular pits which occur in the nail due to defective development and yellowish discoloration of the nails. There can also be onycholysis which means separation of nail from the nail bed and the pathognomic sign in psoriatic nail change is oil drop sign which is also known as salmon patches which can be seen as reddish yellow discoloration on the nails. Joint involvement in psoriasis is called as psoriatic arthritis. It commonly presents as asymmetric oligoarthritis, which means lesser joints are involved, commonly involving lesser number of joints, and it is not symmetrical, which means same joints are not involved on both sides of the body. It can involve large joints like knee joints or small joints in hands, commonly involving the distal interphalangeal joint, which is showed in highlight here. A severe variety of arthritis is called as arthritis mutilans, which is a debilitating variety where the joints are severely damaged, although this type is not very common. Now let us talk some histopath, which means how the skin lesion appears under a microscope. There are some changes like parakeratosis, which means presence of nuclei in the stratum corneum layer, which is the topmost layer in skin. Ideally, there should be no nuclei in this layer because this layer should not be having living cells. But here in psoriasis, the main pathology is increased rate of cell turnover in epid epidermis. So the young cells reach the top layer very early, so they be coming along with their nucleus. Next change is hyperkeratosis, which means the stratum corneum is thickened. Along with that, we can also see the stratum granulosum layer, which is a layer supposed to be present under the stratum corneum. It will be absent or even are very small in psoriasis. We can also see that the next underlying layer, which is stratum spinosum, will be thickened in psoriasis, which is called as acanthosis. Then the elongation of epidermis into the dermis, which is called as reti ridges, will be further elongated and long in this condition. There are some collections of neutrophils in the layers of skin in psoriasis which are called as microabscesses. So the microabscess which is present in stratum corneum is called as Munro microabscess. So it is basically a collection of neutrophils in stratum corneum. And the microabscess which is present in stratum spinosum is called as spongiform postules of Kokoj. Now let us see about the treatment of psoriasis. Topical drugs can be used. So these drugs are applied 
topically over the body. The commonly used ones are coal tar, dithranol, which is also called as anthraline, then calcitriol, topical steroids, and emollients, which decreases the dryness of the skin. The next treatment modality is using phototherapy can use narrow band ultraviolet B rays within the wavelength range of around 311 nanometer and can also use a technique called PUA which means using a photosensorizer drug orally called as soralin and then giving ultraviolet A rays to the patient topically. So this drug is taken orally and this will sensitize the skin for better action of phototherapy so combining soralin with ultraviolet A therapy is called as PUA therapy and it is also very effective and there are some treatment regimens in psoriasis one of the popular treatment regimen is called as Gokarman regimen where there will be topical application of coal tar and combined with that ultraviolet B rays are given this will produce better results and a further advanced regimen is called as Ingram regimen where along with coal tar and ultraviolet B rays another topical drug is used which is anthraline. So systemic ter therapy involves drugs which are taken by injections or by oral route. So systemically the commonly used drugs are methotrexate, cyclosporine, retinoids and some, TNM and some TNF alpha inhibitors like infliximab and biologicals like ustekinumab which is a monoclonal antibody which is an interleukin 12-23 blocker. Drugs which aggravate psoriasis. So beta blockers which are commonly used drugs for example in cases of hypertension and it has got various uses can actually aggravate and worsen psoriasis. And one of the very important thing to remember is systemic corticosteroids therapy can worsen psoriasis. The catch is that initially corticosteroids will act like suppressing the psoriatic lesions but when corticosteroid therapy is stopped suddenly there will be sudden worsening and reappearing of severe form of psoriasis so that is why systemic corticosteroid therapy is usually contraindicated in psoriasis. Then some antimalarials and antibiotics like tetracycline can also worsen psoriasis. Thank you so much for all your support and for watching this video till the end. If you found this helpful and learned something new from this video, hit the like button, share this video to your friends. And I'm so happy to let you know that our second channel 2 Minute Doc reached 500 subscribers. Thank you for all your support and here you can learn about various concepts in just 2 minutes. So check out the channel, the link is in the description. And if you want to invest in Bitcoin, there's a referral link in the description. You can use the link. And if you use that link and buy some Bitcoin and complete your KYC, you'll get rupees 200 worth of Bitcoin totally for free. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video till the end and for all your love and support. And we have reached 35,000 subscribers. I'm so eager to reach 50,000 subscribers soon. And you can be a part of that by hitting the subscribe button right now. You can watch more videos by clicking on the videos you see on the screen right here. And you can also check out my 2 Minute Doc channel by clicking on the link right here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.